This video is supported by Skillshare. As we're exploring different ways of space travel, a new breed of spacecraft has entered our horizon. I'm talking about the Dream Chaser made by Sierra Nevada Corporation. As you can see, the way it flies is somewhat reminiscent of the old Space Shuttle Orbiter. Just recently, NASA approved its production, making it one of the three vehicles that will send cargoes to the International Space Station, directly competing with SpaceX businesses. This is not only exciting, but also interesting because this vehicle will be landing horizontally, just like the Space Shuttle. So let's talk about it today, and most importantly, whether this will usher into a new era of space exploration and how this will affect its existing competitions. For the purpose of discussion, let's focus on the capability of Dream Chaser first. Here's the comparison between Dream Chaser and the Space Shuttle. As you can see, Dream Chaser is a much smaller vehicle with less payload capability. It's smaller in size as well. It's 9 meters in length and has a wingspan of 7 meters where the two numbers for Space Shuttle is 37 meters and 23 meters respectively. Not only is the Space Shuttle four times the size of Dream Chaser, it is also four times the payload capability. Space Shuttle has a maximum payload capability of 25 tons and Dream Chaser has 5.5 tons capability. So in this case, isn't Dream Chaser just a less capable version of the Space Shuttle? Well, not really. Dream Chaser was meant to perform resupply missions to the International Space Station and currently, two of its alternatives are SpaceX and Orbital ATK. Both of them are commissioned to transport just over 3 tons of payload to the International Space Station per trip. Assuming a similar situation applies to Dream Chaser, it is more than capable of performing the missions with its current capability. Additionally, Dream Chaser is quite different when it comes to how it arrives in space. For the shuttle, it was sent by dedicated iconic rocket boosters designed just for itself. But for Dream Chaser, it was meant to be rocket agnostic. The two wings were designed to be foldable so that it can be docked on payload adapters and protected by fairings. It also has an expanded cargo section that will be used for uplift. For the first missions, Dream Chaser will be transported by ULA's Atlas V to space before it can carry out the rest of the missions by itself. As for the future missions, it is entirely possible that Dream Chaser will aboard a Falcon 9 for transportation. In that sense, it is not fair to compare Dream Chaser to the Space Shuttle as it is not a complete system. It is more like a Crew Dragon capsule in that regard. One thing people don't know is that Dream Chaser's original design lost the competition to SpaceX Crew Dragon and Boeing Starliner for crewed missions to the International Space Station. However, the Dream Chaser is revolutionary in some other aspects. That is the reason why NASA has chosen Dream Chaser as one of the three spacecrafts for ISS resupply missions. In my opinion, by selecting Dream Chaser, NASA is supporting three things. Its reusability, its hybrid engines, and its automatic horizontal landing. All of which is avant-garde in the industry. Reusability is not something new. SpaceX has launched and tested the reusability of almost all of Falcon 9 except for its second stage. But hybrid engines and automatic horizontal landing is definitely a unique feature of the Dream Chaser. Now, I want to break it to you that SNC has decided against the use of hybrid engines in its current design, but this shouldn't stop us from discussing it. Dream Chaser's hybrid engines are its most experimental and potentially revolutionary feature. What it means is that instead of using a liquid propellant engine like Falcon 9, or a solid booster like the Space Shuttle, Dream Chaser is trying to have the best of both worlds. Throttleability of the liquid engines and easy to build like solid boosters. It's a great piece of technology, but it's relatively new. That's why SNC abandoned it this time. But I personally think it will have a bright future, especially with Virgin Galactic still testing and using those designs. I'm hopeful that it would be picked up again in the future. But before it is, let me just show you a list of potential advantages of hybrid engines. They're pretty impressive. So finally, to respect Dream Chaser's competitions, we need to at least compare their prices. In that aspect, we don't have a lot of statistics, but it's safe to say that the price per launch of Dream Chaser is much higher than that of SpaceX. According to NASA's report, SpaceX resupply mission cost $152 million per launch, while the cost of Orbital ATK launches are around $262 million. When it comes to Dream Chaser, 
since it needs to be sent by Atlas V, it is only reasonable for us to assume that it's going to be higher than that. Some estimate put it at around $40 million more. Now you might wonder, why don't Dream Chaser use Falcon Eye for its launches? Well, that's a bit tricky. Falcon Eye is able to accommodate the dimensions of Dream Chaser and its fairings are more than 5 meters in diameter. Therefore, it's not about prices this time. It's about hiring Atlas V and hence ULA for its missions, thanks to the United States Congress. But whatever the intention is, Dream Chaser is undoubtedly unique in that it provides us with an alternative way of landing and potentially even propulsion. Dream Chaser is a super exciting vehicle that promises changes to space exploration. The system is not complete as it has to be launched by powerful rockets made by other companies, but some of its technical details do provide us with an alternative possibility. For example, its hybrid engine. They're powerful and they're different. It's a pity that SNC has decided against the hybrid engine design following Virgin Galactic's accident, but they haven't stopped researching on its viability. This alternative is very exciting. It's just disappointing that we couldn't make use of it right now. All that aside, one thing is for sure. Dream Chaser will be a great addition to the Space Force, and I'm excited about that. Another company I'd like to share with you today is Skillshare. Skillshare is an awesome online community with over 20,000 classes in analytics, business, technology, and more. You can think of it as a toolbox that helps you improve your skills when you needed it most. Want to improve your presentation skills? Why not start with this course from Simon Sinek? How to share ideas that inspire action. He's one of the most respected author and motivational speakers of the world. His videos on YouTube are watched hundreds of millions of times, so you know you're learning from the right person. The first 500 people to sign up will get a two-month free trial, so sign up to Skillshare today with a link in the description down below. By doing so, you also help this channel as well.